Hi there, I'm Kathleen Jasper, and today we're working on some essay practice skills. This is just going to be a general video on how to use your writing skills to approach any essay prompt you might be given. And it's a way for you to just practice, regardless of what test you're taking, regardless of what prompt you get. This video will help you hone those skills, those writing skills that you need to be able to achieve on any certification exam or any writing task that you might be asked to do. So we're just practicing today with no test in mind, just getting better at writing. Let's get started. So we get a ton of requests to look at people's essays, to do one-to-one -one coaching and things like that. And we don't have the um, ability to look at everybody's essays. If I looked at everyone's essays, I would literally be doing that all day, every day and nothing else because so many of you need help. But I thought one thing that we could do is we could start kind of a general practice on the YouTube channel where we take any writing prompt for different subjects, for different things and work on our writing skills so that you become better at this task. Now, this is not gonna be specific for any one exam. We do have writing videos for the Praxis Core and the PLT and the SLLA and all kinds of different tests. And so you can go and reference those if you're looking for a specific task. But I think it's really important for you to get good at all kinds of writing so that no matter what the task is, no matter what the prompt is, you are ready. And so these videos that we're gonna be making are going to be just focused on general writing skills. We're gonna do a prompt, we're gonna talk about it, and we're gonna write an essay together. And that's all it's going to be, all right? Now my recommendation for using this video is to read the prompt that we're gonna show you in just a second, and then hit pause on the video. I want you to then think about how you would write this essay, how you would organize this essay, and then maybe even write it. Then go in and watch the video, then read your essay and see if you've achieved some of the things that we talked about in the video. If you did, awesome. If you didn't, revise or rewrite, and then you know watch the video again if you need to, or rewrite the essay as needed, all right? So this is kind of gonna be like a little mini course, and what you can do is hit pause at any time, rewatch whatever you wanna do. But I do recommend you know, just kind of writing this on your own before watching the video, so you can see how you do before and how you do after. All right, so let's hop over to my computer over here and I wanna show you two ways in which a writing prompt might be presented to you on any exam. So we have this prompt where it's just one paragraph and here's what it says. Many schools have cooperative structures in place that encourage teachers to work together to achieve school goals. Explain ways in which teachers can collaborate to improve their practice and increase student achievement. Be sure to use specific examples to support your claims. Okay, so the task here is explain ways in which teachers can collaborate to improve their practice and increase student achievement. And then there's one request or one thing that they want you to do. Be sure to use specific examples. I cannot stress this enough. You've got to get in there and give us examples. You can't just talk in generalities, all right? So you may want to stop the video now and kind of think about this prompt. Think about how you would organize it. There is a second prompt or a second way in which this prompt might be presented. Let me show you this way. Many schools have cooperative structures in place that encourage teachers to work together to achieve school goals, explain ways in which teachers can collaborate to improve their practice and increase student achievement, so the same task here. Then we have use specific examples to support your claims, but then underneath it, it says, be sure your essay includes why is it important, possible ways this might be accomplished, and potential challenges of collaboration. So the prompt is two ways. The first way is just this right here. Straight up, one paragraph, little mini explanation and what you're supposed to do. And then another way is like this, where you have these three bullets here. And any time that you're presented with a prompt like that, you wanna make sure that you can check off those bullets and go, yes, I did this, yes, I did this, yes, I did this. All three are, are done. So you can stop the video now, 
Think about ways in which you would work through these two practice prompts and then turn it back on and we'll go through these methods. All right, so the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is when you look at a writing prompt, you're going to first figure out what is the task they're asking you to do, all right? So first, what I wanna do is I, I wanna just forget about this for a moment. Let's just forget about that extra piece of the prompt, okay? Let's just go with the basic um, task that they're asking you to do. And we said, explain ways in which teachers can collaborate to improve their practice and increase student achievement. And then again, use specific examples. What I wanna do is create a thesis statement right away based on what they're asking me to do. The thesis statement is what your essay is about. It needs to be clear, it needs to be concise, and it needs to be the last sentence of the first paragraph. I'm gonna show you more about that in just a second. But right away, you should take a position, you should figure out what you're writing about. If you're wishy-washy on this, it's going to cause your essay to be confusing or just not streamlined and organized, okay? So I wanna think right away, what are ways in which teachers can collaborate? And when I think of collaboration in schools, I go right to PLCs, professional learning communities. You might think team meetings, you might think department meetings, whatever it is. I like PLCs, I was in charge of PLCs at my school, I know a lot about them. Maybe you are actively involved in your PLC, maybe you're not, maybe you're a teacher and you haven't done any of that yet. So maybe you just go straight to department meetings or team meetings, whatever it is, figure out what you're gonna say. Now, right here you can see I have my thesis statement. Let's read that now. One of the most effective ways to improve their practice and increase student achievement is to collaborate with other educators in a professional learning community, all right? Now, I modified this thesis a little bit. I have their practice, it should be teachers, but when I put it into my intro paragraph, I had already said teachers several times, so I actually modified my thesis at the end to, to change that to there, and I'll show you what that was like in a second. But I took a position. I am saying one of the most effective ways to collaborate is to work in a PLC. That's it. I'm not going to then talk about all the other ways to collaborate, you know, peer coaching, model classrooms. I'm not gonna get into that. I'm going to stick to PLCs. I have plenty to write about when it comes to PLCs. So that is my thesis statement. And does it, is it going to, um, to fulfill this here? Yes, it is. And then the specific examples portion, we're gonna use in the details, okay? Now, let me go back to this other part right here. Let's say that you got this prompt and you had these three bullets here also. You may have just gotten the top prompt, no bullets, but maybe you had this second prompt where you had the three bullets there. I can see this as an intro, details, and conclusion. Now I already have my thesis, so I've already taken my position. Now I'm looking at the bullets and I'm thinking, hmm, how do I wanna do this? Well, in an intro, that would be a great way to start is to say why it's important for staff to collaborate, right? And they already kind of talk about it up here um, to achieve school goals, student achievement. Obviously, that's why we're going to collaborate, right? Because we want to increase student achievement. That's our job as teachers, right? So that's a good intro where we could use part of this prompt here and talk about why it's important. And then, of course, putting this thesis statement right at the end of that intro paragraph so the reader knows exactly what I'm talking about. Then possible ways this might be accomplished. Well, look at this, possible ways, isn't that specific details? Possible ways you could be like, for example, teachers can do this or teachers can do that. There's your specific details right there. And then potential challenges. I like potential challenges as a conclusion because you can kind of say, while there are challenges like A, B, and C, you can fix that or mitigate that or lessen those challenges by doing D, E, and F. Um, I'm gonna show you how to do that in a second. But challenges are good, and then overcoming the challenges in the um, 
conclusion is kind of a nice way to wrap it up, okay? So if you have three bullets like this, you may want to explore intro details conclusion, all right? So let me show you how this pans out a little bit. All right, so I already have my thesis. To improve practice and increase student achievement, teachers can collaborate in their professional learning communities, all right? So we said PLCs. Again, I'm not talking about team meetings. I'm not talking about model classrooms, you know, peer collaboration. I'm talking about PLCs. So I'm going to think, I'm going to use my scratch paper or start to think in my mind or organize what do PLCs look like? Because remember, we need those specific details. So I'm going to write down quickly, all right, reading teachers. Maybe you're a reading teacher and you participate in a reading PLC. Or maybe you're a science teacher. So instead of reading teachers, you do science teachers or math teachers or whatever, okay? Then what do we talk about in our PLCs? Well, those specific details, strategies, data, action research. You may not know what action research is yet. You're a brand new teacher. Maybe you don't have that in there. Okay, but you still have reading teachers or math teachers, whatever, getting together, working on strategies, looking at data, and improving practice. That's plenty. Even without that action research, you still have one, two, three, four things to discuss in that details paragraph, okay? So what did we do? We looked at the prompt. We figured out what our position is, what we're gonna talk about, what our thesis is. We clearly state it. I have my thesis here. I also wrote it immediately right here after I saw my prompt. Thesis has to happen right away. You've gotta take that position. Then we move to the details. Don't start writing the intro yet. Writing the intro is like going to put you off in la la land. It's going to make it very disorganized. I always say start with these details. That's like the number one thing. Because when you start thinking of the details, the intro and the conclusion come much easier. All right. Now, if you're like, no, I don't like that. I like to write in order. I like to do intro, details, conclusion. Fine. This is just a suggestion. But you want to make sure that you keep your essay clear and concise. Okay. So I've got my thesis. I've got some ideas here jotted down on my scratch paper. I'm kind of thinking, and I'm going to keep my essay to these details that I wrote down. I'm not going off into la la land. I'm just focusing here. All right. Now let's write that details paragraph. Okay. So I still have my thesis. I'm not done with my intro yet, but I have my thesis clearly stated. Now let's take a look at the details. The most common way for teachers to work together to continuously improve is to engage in professional learning communities. Notice the very first sentence here supports what I'm saying here, right? PLCs. PLCs are collaborative groups where teachers discuss their classroom methods and share student data. Notice here is a quick definition. That's, that's good. That's a detail, right? Uh, just a quick definition to let your reader know what PLCs are. I recommend that. Um, don't go on and on. Just a quick definition, all right? Now, here's where the rubber meets the road. For example, for example, now I'm getting into that specific detail that every single essay task is going to ask you to do. For example, a fifth grade reading team PLC might get together every week to discuss implementing reading strategies. Okay, let's go back to my little notes here. What did I say? Reading teachers, and then I said strategies. All right, so I'm staying on track. I'm staying on track. I'm not veering off. I'm focused, keeping it, you know, right to what I'm supposed to be talking about. And share reading data, again, something that was on my list on how their students are doing. Now, I'm gonna go on a little bit further here, but if you're crunched for time, that one example is plenty. You could use that one example, wrap up the paragraph and move on. Now, I added a few, new, few other things because this is like my wheelhouse. I know a lot about this, but if you didn't, you could just have that and that would be okay. All right, let's keep going here. They may look at pre-test data in one meeting and come up with ways to address the needs of students based on that data. Again, I'm talking about data. And I don't just say, oh, they can look at data. I actually tell you how they look at data, pre-test data. Isn't that specific? That's a tangible thing you can actually see them doing. 
Then they meet the following week to determine if methods worked based on that data. Finally, they may administer a post-test and in their PLC discuss the results. Right there are three specific things that I'm talking about when it comes to PLCs, all right? And then we have the teachers can determine what methods were effective and what methods need to be modified. This sharing of data and practices and making classroom decisions together based on data is called action research and helps teachers to be highly effective in the classroom. That's a little ending sentence. Look, maybe you didn't know what action research is. That is action research, by the way. Um, using data together, making decisions, going and testing it, coming back, discussing if it works. It's as simple as that. It's very powerful, just so you know. But let's say you didn't, you have no idea what action research is. You're a first year teacher and you're barely got your head above water, okay? So maybe you just say, this sharing of data and practices and making classroom decisions cross this off, helps teachers to be highly effective in the classroom. You didn't even need that action research there. Okay, all of that works together. Now, that's my detail paragraph. That's my middle paragraph. That's paragraph two. I did that by, let's just recap. And regardless, whether I had this big prompt or this you know, basic prompt here, that detail paragraph is going to be the same, all right? But notice that I, and let me erase a few things here because I got a little messy while I was doing my thing. Notice that my thesis is right here. We're talking PLCs. I then have all of these little anecdotes about PLCs, specific things. Then in my details, did I talk about anything else? Did I talk about other things on another list somewhere in La La Land? No, I kept it to PLCs. It supports the thesis statement. I don't get off track. What I see a lot when people are writing is they want to put more in. Less is more. I might even, if, if I were uh, crunched for time, I might have even left out some of this information. But the thing is, is this information here is all focused on one thing. PLCs, using data, strategies, and collaborating with my fellow educators, okay? That is it. Now, if this was a quick task and all you had to do was just kind of answer this, like for one of your constructed responses, this one paragraph would totally get you the grade you need. I am learning more and more. I used to encourage people to do intros and conclusions and intros and conclusions are, are very good. And we're going to talk about that in a minute, but let's say you're crunched for time. You could just start with this thesis statement here and then go into the Second, second paragraph here and just keep it to this. This would fulfill um, the requirement. Now, we're working on a longer essay here and you may be one of those people who likes to start it with an intro and end it with a conclusion, totally fine. But this details paragraph would probably get you the score you need on many of the um, essay tasks that you'd be asked to do on a teacher certification exam. All right, but let's go get into um, the, the intro and the conclusion. All right. So I've written my details. Now I have it in my brain of like what I'm, what I, what I know I've already written that now let's go into the intro. Now these bullets nicely kind of laid out my intro details and conclusion. So let's take a look at that first bullet, why it is important for staff to collaborate. Great way to do an intro. And let's take a look at it. Let's start here. One of the most important jobs a teacher has is to increase student achievement. However, teachers cannot do this alone and need support to help students achieve. Well, there's one reason why it's important. They can't do it alone and they need support, right? Therefore, it is important for teachers to work together to share information, practices, and successes so they can continuously improve their classroom instruction. There I have that word continuously improve. That's why it's important. That goes to the important piece. Why is it important? Because we want to continuously improve. Then look at here. One of the most effective ways to improve their practice and increase student achievement is to collaborate with other educators in a professional learning community. Notice I have this there here um, because I talked about teachers, teachers, teachers so much. I use that pronoun there, but you could also say one of the most effective ways to improve teacher practice and increase student achievement, you could put teacher there as well. Now, notice this thesis statement is the last sentence in my intro paragraph. 
Because what that does is that leads into my details where all those details support that um, thesis statement. So that's very important. All right. Now we've written our intro. We, that was why it was important. So check intro is done. Check details is done. Now let's look at the conclusion. All right. Potential challenges. All right. Now, listen, now is not the time to write a whole other essay. We just want to bring up a few challenges that might happen when people are working together, which I'm sure you have experienced once or twice in your life. Okay. So let's take a look at the way I would structure this conclusion. While PLCs can help improve teachers' classroom practices, there can be challenges to working in PLCs. For example, some teachers may not get along or may have other ideas for how they want to teach. Others may have a hard time opening up about the challenges they are having or areas in which they need help. Now here's where we flip it and we get into the good things and wrapping up the essay. However, when teachers engage in regular collaboration and set norms for their group interaction, these challenges can be mitigated. Now you might be like, what does mitigated mean? It just means lessen. We can lessen the challenges or have fewer challenges by doing this regularly and practicing just like anything else. Regular participation in PLCs not only increases student achievement, but it also helps teachers become highly effective in the classroom and among their peers. Nice ending sentence, we're done. So notice that I did mention the challenges, which fulfills this bullet here, but then I flipped it to make it a nice ending, wrap it up with a bow and get out of there. All right, so let's put it all together and see how we do based on the prompt and based on the task. So remember, we had this prompt here. The main task was to explain ways in which teachers can collaborate to improve their practice and then use specific examples. That's probably one of the most important things to support your claim. And then we have these three bullets here. We want to make sure our essays include this. Now, even if we didn't have those three bullets there, we could still write the same essay, but sometimes they give you these bullets and it helps to, you know, focus. All right, let's take a look. So we have, one of the most important jobs a teacher has is to increase student achievement. This is our intro here. However, teachers cannot do this alone and need support. It is important for teachers to work together to share information and to continuously improve their classroom instruction. So let's go back to our little rubric here. Did we explain why it's important for them to collaborate? Yes, we did. We just said to continuously improve, they need support, yada, yada. Okay, good. Then the last sentence of the first paragraph is, one of the most effective ways to improve teacher practice, and I would probably change this there now that I'm reading it aloud, I would probably modify that to teacher practice or to improve teacher's practice. I would change that too. Let's put it out here. Remember, you're going to, um, you're going to modify as you work, to work on it. Um, An increased student achievement is to collaborate with other educators in a professional learning community, PLC, my thesis. I'm stating this is the most effective way. All right, now, when we read this, you can see the second paragraph here. The most common way for teachers to work together to continuously improve is to engage in professional learning communities or PLCs. That feels redundant from what I set up here. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take this out and just start with the definition. Because notice, we are always thinking of ways to do better, right? So let me get out of here. Let's see what happens when I delete that first sentence that we had and just go straight to the definition. Remember, we had that definition here in our details, but I had one sentence above it. Let's read that thesis again and then move into the details and see how that works. One of the most effective ways, I'm starting here. One of the most effective ways to improve teacher's practice and increase student achievement is to collaborate with other educators in a, I think I messed that up, in a, there we go, I remember I deleted it accidentally, professional learning community, PLC. All right, one quick thing, because I defined PLC here and I did the acronym, I can now just use PLC throughout the, the thing. You gotta define it first and then you can use it. 
PLCs are collaborative groups where teachers discuss their classroom methods and share student data. Notice how nicely that kind of goes together. Like I told you my thesis and then I define what a PLC is, which supports the thesis. Rather than repeat again, one of the most important ways is to work in a PLC. I already said that in my thesis and when I put them together, I noticed it was redundant, so I deleted it. For example, a fifth grade reading team PLC might get together every week to discuss and then I go on. They may look and present data. They meet at the following week to determine if the methods worked. I've got all these specific examples. Finally, they may administer a post-test. So I'm talking pre-test, post-test. I got examples. I can see the teachers working together. Those specific examples helps me to see what's going on. And then I have this sharing of data and practices and making classroom decisions together based on data is called action research and helps teachers be highly effective in the classroom. Okay, so did we satisfy bullet number two? And did we satisfy specific examples to support your claims? Yes, we did. Possible ways, PLC, all those examples, we're doing good, all right? Now we need this last bullet here, potential challenges for collaboration. Great way to end it. Here we go. While PLCs can help improve teachers' classroom practices, there can be challenges to working in PLCs. And then I get into the four examples. Remember, we have to support our claims every time we make a claim. You can't just say, oh, there's challenges, but they can get over it. You've got to show me what the challenges are because that's a big part of the essay is to show me what's going on through specific details. And then we have, for example, some teachers may not get along. They may have a hard time opening up. They may, you know, whatever. And then we go into the solution. A solution at the end is always great. And that's right here. However, when teachers engage in regular collaboration and set norms in their group interaction, these challenges can be lessened. Regular participation in PLCs not only increases student achievement, and here's the, the bow on top or the icing on the cake, it helps teachers become highly effective in the classroom and among their peers. So not just in the classroom, but also with other teachers. And the whole thing is about collaboration, and we ended with that collaboration. So notice that this is a three paragraph essay packed full of important information, and we can say, check, check, check and check. All of our tasks have been achieved here through this essay, all right? Now, I understand that this might be hard for you to do right away, but as you practice your writing, you'll be able to come up with this easier and easier every time. When I see a prompt like this, I go immediately to the task, figure out what am I being asked to do, okay? I'm being asked to, to define what are some things teachers can do to collaborate and why it's important, all right? What's one thing I can talk about? Not 80 things, not 50 things, not even three things, one thing. Don't go off into all these other places. Another important thing that I did is I kept my thesis very general. I didn't get into the specifics. Often I see people put specific details in their thesis and then it's like all over the place. The thesis is just stating basically what your essay is about. In this case, we're talking about the most effective way to engage in collaboration is through PLCs. That's my position. You may disagree. You may say something else. You might say um, they need to do team building. You might say, I think teachers should do team building or play kickball after school together, whatever it is. It doesn't matter. It's your thesis, but you don't want to add in all these specific details. It just needs to be a general statement, basically saying, this is what my essay is about without saying, this is what my essay is about. Don't say those words. This is what my essay is about. Just say it in your statement. In my statement here, I'm saying the most effective way is through PLCs. That's my thesis. And then the details paragraph, that's where all those specific details go to support that thesis, okay? Another thing I wanna point out before we end here today is how easy this is to read. This is something that comes with practice, okay? You wanna make it easy on the grader. You don't wanna make it so that the grader has to go all around the world to figure out what you're trying to do here, okay? So make it easy. Notice my thesis statement right here, and then my details move right in and support my thesis. My um, sentences are 
simple. I mean, yeah, I'm using some big words, action, research, collaboration, stuff like that, but I don't have long compound connected sentences. I'm keeping it straight with punctuation. I'm putting periods in there. I'm not trying to, you know, have all these run ons and all of that. When in doubt, hit that period, start a new sentence. I see that a lot too. People want to make these long elaborate sentences. Okay. So we've got a definitive thesis here, details that support, and then a wrap up. And we have done all three of the tasks or completed all three of the tasks that they have asked us to do in the prompt. And right there, the, the reader can go check. Yup. 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 And then give us a good grade on this. Okay. We made it easy on the grader. That's what you want to do. We want to make sure that the grader does not have to go searching for the right information that you have presented it right there. All right. So keep it simple, keep it concise, keep it organized and keep practicing. Thank you so much for watching today. Let me know in the comments if you want me to do more of these videos on just general essay tasks. I'll be happy to do that. Don't forget to subscribe, tell your colleagues we're here and hit the thumbs up if you liked this video. Thank you so much and have an awesome day.